everyone, this is Grant from Spectra Racing. So today we're going to go over how to more quickly sync data to video. So if you haven't seen the previous videos on how to get uh, race car data on your GoPro or other video camera footage, make sure to check that out in the card above. And if you want to set up uh, like a, a budget data system in your car, I've also done a recent, more recent video on the channel about uh, the tablet setup I have in my car. So today we have Race Render open. Uh, not much has changed uh, with the program itself in the last four years or so. Uh, they have added some easier ways to sync the data to the video, which is what we're going to go over today. Now, some things that have changed uh, with the way I've been doing this over the last few years is I do not let Race or I do not let Track Attic, which is the software you use that it's they're both developed by HP Tuners here. Um, I do not let the tablet or phone or whatever you're using to sync to the GoPro through Wi-Fi. I have found that so many people are using this software now and uh, using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity that the GoPros have a lot of trouble sometimes and there's a lot of interference out at events. So I manually start both the data and the GoPro or any other kind of camera I'm using. Now, as a result, uh, you will then have to find a better way to sync your data to your video. And thankfully, Race Render has uh, provided some more up-to-date tools that make this really, really easy, as opposed to staring at the the uh, the frames and seeing, you know, if if your car has moved or versus the RPMs. Uh, it's it's just a whole lot easier now. So just to quickly get into it, I have loaded a uh, a GoPro file. You see this here. This GoPro file was started probably two minutes after I hit the record button on the data uh, on my on my um, Android tablet on my car, which is connected to the car itself, which is where all this data came from. So to more quickly sync uh, the data to the video, after you bring up all the, uh, both the data and the video, they have this side-by-side -side tool. So this has always been here, but there are a few new tools that you can use. So for some reason, sometimes it only brings up one of your inputs. So in this, this is the video here. So just grab your data. I don't know why. I, I think I, on the data, I accidentally, uh, <laughs> I accidentally labeled it as firm, even though I was added Amelia for an autocross. So some of the cooler things they have added is this data display at the bottom here. You can now uh, you can now change this, and it, it really helps with quickly syncing data. So what you can do to get yourself started, um, if your data and video are really out of sync, generally I like to uh, sync these time moments, the locations at least. So if you know you notice your car is sitting somewhere for a while, you're probably sitting at the start. So right now these data points have gotten to the same location, but they may or may not be, you know, a few half second or so off. So once we've gotten that uh, to the exact location, which the pre previous video will cover, so make sure to check that out. And honestly, the previous video will uh, is still a pretty good way to do it, but this new method speeds it up just a little bit. So once you've gotten to the same general location, uh, I just go down here to the speed graph. So you can see, so watch the speed graph in relation to the actual video itself as I hit play. So they're going to be moving together. You see right as I hit the bar that starts to go up on the speed graph, the car starts to move. So these are the time points you actually want to sync. As soon as your car starts to move at the start, you want to sync these two settings together. So to fine tune, adjust these sync settings, as I said in the previous video, all you do is you move backwards or forwards either the data or the uh, the video itself in relation to each other. This can get a little confusing because I even still am moving the wrong thing forwards or backwards in time in relation to one or the other. So you're just going to have to play with it till it makes sense. Once you think you have it good, you hit OK. And then hit the play button. So let's, so let's listen to this. So you see, as I'm going, 
shift into second, you can see the dip in the RPM. So that seems pretty good. And the best way to do this, uh, to double check your work has actually been good, is to go to the end and see if your braking zones uh, make sense. So as you see, I slow down. So it seems to make sense. It seems to be working. Now this obviously works great uh, at a at an autocross or drag race or something. If you did this at a track day, I do suggest that uh, you start your your data and your video maybe in the paddock before you you know when you're stationary. If you start it while you're driving, it becomes a little bit more tricky to to sync together. Now there is a wizard that does show up here sometimes that actually can uh, sync this automatically. I have not really gotten that to work. If you have, may have more luck than me, I'm not sure actually why it's not showing up here. Now there are other tools like the RPM graph, which I really like. That may be better if you did, you know, start your data while you're moving or start, you know, vice versa while you're moving. You can kind of see your shift points and kind of sync the data there. So that's it. Uh, this quick little video on race render and how to sync your data to your video. Be sure to let me know if you have any other comments or suggestions on how to, uh, if you want to know how else to use race render. I've been using this software for almost five years now. It is a really great tool for, you know, overlaying data and seeing the changes. Uh, for instance, uh, I've now discovered compared to my Optima event, that uh, my temperatures are down about uh, 12 degrees uh, based off of like, you know, exterior and exterior temperatures uh, and, you know, doing some changes to the car, like the hood vents, uh, oil cooler and things like that. So you can, you can just, you know, purely alone, not uh, speed or any of those things, just, you know, the build of your car, even if you're not so interested in, um, in seeing, you know, your driving improvement, just to see if you've improved the performance of your car itself. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.